Now that we understand what the gist of a firewall filter does, what is it really trying to accomplish for us at the end of the day, all about working with that data plane, we need to start setting the foundation or laying the bricks, so to speak, of how we actually build a firewall filter. It is very, very similar to a route policy, but there are some key differences that you need to keep in mind. Now in this particular nugget, what we're going to do is start building out our very first firewall filter, and we're gonna talk about what are those differences and similarities. So let's get going building out our first firewall filter on VMX1. So our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to actually deploy a firewall filter in a very basic firewall filter just so that we could understand the gist of it and how does it flow and how does it read is going to be this right here. Let's take host seven for just one moment. Let's pretend that host seven has the IP address 192.168.77.7 and this will be a 24 bit mask. And let's say its default gateway is right here, this gig E001 interface, which is 192.168.77. Dot one. Let's call that. So what we want to do when we create a firewall filter, let's pretend for a moment that we want to allow traffic coming from host seven, but only for HTTP, the HTTP protocol. That is, of course, the destination port of port 80 using TCP. So what we want to do is we want to allow host seven to use its web browser to send traffic in to gig E001, but all other traffic like ICMP or SMB or FTP, so on and so on and so on, we want that traffic to be dropped. We want that traffic to not be processed by the packet forwarding engine. So that's what we're going to configure in this nugget right now. Let's get started working on VMX1. So I'll bring up the console here and let's just check out show interfaces terse to validate that gig E001 right there, I'm highlighting it. We can see it does have an IPv4 address of 192.168.77.1. And this is what we want to start manipulating so that it actually stops traffic outside of the HTTP traffic from our host seven device. So to do this, we're going to go into configuration mode and we're going to start building our first firewall filter. The tier that this is done is under firewall. Wow, what a clever name. And very interestingly, the best way that we could actually create a firewall filter and keep our configurations nice and clean is we actually tell our firewall filter first what address family is it actually participating in? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the edit family INET tier. So now we see that, okay, I'm working on firewall filters and I'm specifically working on firewall filters that are going to be implemented on IPv4 address families in the IPv4 routing table. So this is already the first major thing that you should consider when creating a firewall filter. You don't necessarily have to specify the family, but you may see this on an exam environment and it is considered the best practice is to go into the actual address family that you'd like to be working with first. Also a little spoiler as we jump ahead, I'm just one moment, there's a couple nuggets from now. We're gonna talk about applying the firewall filters and you actually have to apply a firewall filter under an address family. So it's just another way to logically keep things cleaned up. And you'll see more of that when we get to that nugget in a couple nuggets from now. So now that I'm actually in the IPv4 address family, which is family INET on Junus devices, we are now going to start creating our first firewall filter. And the command to do that is set filter. What a clever name. Then we have to actually specify what is going to be this filter's name. Just like how route policies had the policy statement and then we gave that policy statement a name and that became the actual policy itself, that's exactly what we're doing here. We're creating the actual filter itself that is going to be applied and is going to contain all of the rules that we care about. So a clever name would be something like host seven allow HTTP. I think that makes a whole lot of sense because now I can actually tell what is this filter going to be trying to do. It's allowing HTTP for host seven. And then I'll give it a question mark and you'll see the next major talking point when it comes to Junos firewall filters. Junos firewall filters all must have a term. Now remember how that may contrast a little bit from route policies. We actually started out by creating route policies without a term, but a Junos device must have at least one term. Now we can have multiple terms and just like in route policies, it is followed like a sequence of events or a sequence of terms that have to get evaluated, evaluated one after another. But nonetheless, when we're creating our first firewall filter, we actually have to specify a term on Junos devices. So I've got my overarching filter here named 
host 7 allow HTTP. Now I'm going to specify my first term and I can again give this term a name or I could just number these, which is another nice clean way to do things. It depends on really what your environment or your business expectations or business rules are. Some businesses only want these to be numbered, term one, two, three, four, five, and some may say, no, you have to explicitly name what is each term doing. In my case, I'm just gonna call this term one, and then we can jump straight into the from statements. If I give it a question mark, we'll take a look at what are the matching qualifications that we could look at. And I'll hit spacebar a few times so that we can see the entire set of rules here. And these do look a little bit different. We have a bunch of different things that we can match on here because we can actually match on just about any field in an entire header, whether it's layer two, three, or four. We can match on things like what is the TCP flags are set to? Is TCP sessions established? What are the source ports or the source addresses? If I scroll up a hair, we can also see things like the destination addresses, the destination port, or very interestingly, if I scroll down just a little bit more, we could just specify a port and this would match on either the source or the destination port. We could specify kind of like a wildcard for each of those. We can also specify the classes of traffic or the preferences of traffic. We can even start inspecting things like the encapsulating security payloads, like the IPsec SPI values, which I think is pretty fascinating, or DSCP tags. So the whole point here is we could actually match on a whole lot of things. And in my case, I could put match on from source address. And if we give it a question mark, we can specify the exact prefix that we want to match on. Since I was trying to explicitly name host seven as the address that I wanted to match on, I'll put 192.168.77.7 slash 32 and press enter there. So kind of recapping real quick, let's take a look at our first term that we're creating within our firewall. We're specifying that this is in the INET family. We've named the actual filter itself. We have our first term and we are matching on the source address. But what are the other things that I also wanted to match on? You see, I've got the host identified now, but I also wanted to make sure that I was allowing HTTP traffic. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to press up a couple times and get back to this from statement. And now you may be thinking, okay, well, we could specify a destination port of port 80, couldn't we? Yep, you'd be absolutely correct. We could specify the destination port of port 80 and hit show, but this kind of begs another question here. We need to be a little bit more explicit when we say these things. Why? Because it's possible that someone could generate traffic or spoof traffic that might actually send traffic to a UDP port of port 80. You see, at this point, we're identifying traffic sourced from our host with a destination port of port 80, but in the event that something doesn't actually use TCP to access port 80, then we may end up forwarding that traffic accidentally. So let's hit up one more time and specify the from protocol of TCP, and now take a look at our matching term. We've identified the host. They're going to be using TCP port 80, which is the well-known port for HTTP traffic. And now what we want to do is we want to create our then statement. Just like in a route policy, when we were creating terms for routes and altering the control plane, now we have a then statement here. Actually, before I type accept, let me hit the question mark here and you can start taking a look at how the then statements may look for a firewall filter. Here's the big thing. We actually have an entire nugget dedicated to what these actions are because these are really, really important to understand when it comes to creating a firewall filter. It also is really important to understand the different options that are available to you when you're actually going through the JNCIA Junos exam. So just know that there are a bunch of different options rather than just accept and reject. You've got a bunch of different things that you can use in a firewall filter, and we're going to be covering those in an upcoming nugget. Now I'm going to hit the accept button and press enter, and now we see our actual firewall filter, and this is the next major talking point. We were only trying to allow traffic from a host destined to HTTP port 80, TCP 80, and now we need to make sure that the rest of the traffic is not permitted into the packet forwarding engine. And guess what? That's already happening. This is the next major talking point about firewall filters. We had to specify a term here because there is a default term of then discard at the end of every single firewall filter we create. That's right, there is a 
implicit deny all at the end of our firewall filters, just like you'd seen in ACLs on other vendors where there's an implicit deny all or an implicit deny any any. That's exactly right. That's what's happening on firewall filters at the end of each firewall filter that we create on Junos. And that is why we have to specify our own terms first is because they have to be evaluated in this order. So when we create terms, they're going to be evaluated in the order of our first term. And if anything matches here, then it goes on. And if there is no match, it goes down to an implicit deny all or an implicit then discard on the Junos device. So to recap, let's read what we've got here. We are in the firewall tier, and then we've specified our IPv4 fa address family. We've named our firewall filter under the filter tier, and then we have our first term. We identify our source address, the protocol that's being in use, and what the destination port is that this host is trying to access. And when this traffic comes in, we're going to accept or permit that traffic. Then lastly, there is an implicit deny all term, which is the term then discard. That's how it would be written in the actual Junos operating system. In fact, there's nothing stopping you from creating this just so that you manually know where it is, but there's also no reason to because it's already implicitly written there on the actual configuration itself. So that's been understanding the bones or the structure of creating your first firewall filter. I hope this has been informative for you and would like to thank you for viewing.